any stranger could come to you and ask if everything is okay and they are be beeping you all the time welcome to anna's culture shocks in this video i will tell you more about latvia and montenegro because for the last three and a half years i've been living in latvia and exactly one month ago i immigrated to montenegro and now with like fresh emotions i'm going to tell you about the differences and my culture shocks and so on so if you're thinking about traveling to this country or to immigrate make sure to watch this video till the very end because you will get plenty of useful information of course the first thing that you face when you arrive to a country is people since Latvia is a northern country, people are more distant and not that communicative. The chance that somebody would approach you on the street without actually knowing you and ask how are you is close to zero, while in Montenegro, I don't know, any stranger could come to you and ask if everything is okay, if they need to help you and stuff like that, so it's really interesting and surprising because after three years in Latvia, I really got used to the fact that people like don't really like I don't know hug each other they don't really like communicate that much like on the streets if they don't know you or if they know you a little bit and stuff and coming here and seeing that people hug each other all the time and kiss and stuff like that and talk and I'm like oh my god it's just too much because I'm also an introvert so it's not only because of Latvia and living in Latvia but because of my character and it's just a lot sometimes I guess but I think it's a good thing and the common thing between Latvia Latvian and Montenegrin is that they are ready to help. Even if a Latvian, like a typical Latvian, would have like this serious face expression, they would hesitate to approach and ask for help. But as soon as you do, their face lightens up and they are ready to, to do like anything to help you and it's really cool and here in Montenegro it could seem that they are more likely to help you but just because they are open and they can approach you without like any other reason and another thing is that they can just I don't know stop at the middle of the street with their car just to say hi and to ask how are you a person on the sidewalk that they know and it's it's just <laughs> super communicative but yeah it's a south it's a southern country and i think it's common for every southern country that they are really very communicative and as soon as they find out that you're a foreigner i think it's even better and more interesting because they really like can ask like where are you from how do you like it here etc and i think it can be like two sides. When they find out that you're a foreigner, they're ready to help more or they are ready to scam you, so really be careful. I think it works uh, the same both in Latvia and in Montenegro, so just keep it in mind. Another thing that I'm actually not very happy about in all the countries where I've lived except for my home country is the working hours of different organizations, cafes, etc. In Latvia, I've lived in a not, in a not very big city in Ventspils and there everything worked until like five or six, you know, including cafes, banks, etc. So if in the evening you want to go out and eat something, well, the only place that would be open most probably nightclub and not the best one. If you go to Riga, the capital city in Latvia, of course, more places will be open, etc. And you will have a chance like to, um, yeah, to just chill with your friends, etc. And banks are open longer. But in Montenegro, it's interesting. <laughs> I love the word interesting because it's just when you do not have any more comments, interesting is the right word to use. All the organizations, like for example, immigration office, they work until two, three, maximum four o'clock. And the funny thing that I found out very recently is that they usually move their lunch to the end of the working day so that they could go home earlier, like one hour earlier. I think it's a part of Montenegrin culture that they really love to party, to enjoy their life, and they really don't, don't like to work. And if you're an immigrant here, it influences you, of course, and all the other aspects that I will be talking about in this video. But all the cafes, they work until 10, 12. For the last three years, my husband and I really got used to the fact that after six, there is no one on the street, nothing happens in the city, and you just go, I don't know, chill at home, watch a movie or TV series and go to bed. But here, the right time to go out is like after eight or even nine, because there are also many people outside during lunchtime, uh, because they really love, you know, to take their time to enjoy their life, to drink coffee, to look at this beautiful view, like with the mountains and stuff. My least favorite days, of course, it's Sunday. I thought that Sunday in Latvia was bad, but no, no, forget what I said. Sunday in Montenegro is the worst because nothing works. 
no grocery stores are open, luckily cafes are open, so if you uh, fail to buy something to eat on Saturday, you can still go to the cafes. On Sunday, it happens every time to me, like during the week you have everything you need, but by Sunday you just feel as if you need to go to the grocery stores and you just remember that they are closed and there is like one 24-7 grocery store and you need to go there like for 30 minutes. In Latvia on Sundays, well, if you're in a big city, I think everything more or less will work except for like small, um, small stores like flower stores or clothing stores that are like uh, private stores. No, not like in the shopping mall but yeah in smaller cities yeah no pharmacies will, will work only like 24 7 pharmacies like one for for a city and uh, all the smalls uh, all the small stores they will be closed as well only grocery stores will will be open and maybe the stores in the shopping mall if there is one so yeah i think in latvia it was better in my home country everything works every day so it was really weird for me when i first moved to latvia then i moved to friends i was like oh my god give me my sunday back here i'm in Montana and the same thing so it's something I need to get used to because I just tend to go out and eat more on Sundays. In local culture in Montenegro they have this word polaco that is translated like slow. I think in Spanish or in Portuguese there is poco poco. It's the same thing. It's about just being slow to take your time to enjoy your life. It influences everything and when you need to have something done for example, a certificate or any documents, it would take you ages here. In Latvia, it's not that fast as well, but definitely faster than in Montenegro. There is a big contrast between how they work and how they drive on the roads, because they work really slowly, but they drive as fast as, I don't know, if anyone even drives faster than them. There, there could be like a road sign that you cannot exceed the limit of 90 kilometers per hour and they will just go 150 kilometers per hour and it would be just crazy. For example, yesterday we were coming back from, uh, from Budwa, it's a city that is like one hour something away from Podgorica where I live now. It was already dark and the road is in the mountains, it goes like this and when you're not experiencing enough to drive on this on such roads because you just like you know you lived in Latvia before for example in Russia where or, like in the region where there is no mountains at all and you're just like oh my god how to drive this car here and they are beeping you all the time behind so that you should go faster but you just follow the rules the signs but they want to go faster because I don't know they were born in this environment I don't know they uh, got used to the fact that you should drive fast in those crazy roads and it's crazy because even in the city it's really dangerous to cross the road because no matter what light green yellow or red they will go because they need to go you know uh, and in Latvia it's just the opposite because everyone tries to follow the rules if there is 90 kilometers per hour on the highway everyone more or less will follow the rules and after Latvia is just the biggest contrast to come here to see those crazy drivers on the highways in the city like everywhere and super uncomfortable when you walk somewhere all the time. Well, I got used to it when I lived in China, so I think after some time I will get used to it here as well. Yeah, Latvia is the cleanest country where I've ever been to or traveled to. And when I come to Montenegro, I was like ready to cry because everything's full of garbage, trash. And well, the um, saddest thing that you can observe is when you come to this beautiful I don't know, place with mountains, lake, or I don't know, river, and there will be tons of garbage everywhere. I'm like, I wouldn't even dare to throw anything near this beautiful place. But I think for local people, Polako is just they are too lazy to go to the, I don't know, trash can. They're just throw everything in front of them and that's really sad because it also influences this um, garbage recycling because it's just not working here they still have beans for different trash but no local people no people that actually sort the garbage afterwards they do do they don't do anything to actually recycle the garbage and i'm still trying to recycle it at home but as soon as i get it to the trash bin i just know that most probably those guys that take out the garbage uh, from the town they would just mix it all together and they don't care and if you really want to recycle something you need to go to 
special points in the city. In Latvia it was much easier uh, because we had those trash bins in the yard and we really, really saw that people would take them out or to sort them still and um, I think several months ago they installed machines in the shops where you could take all the plastic and glass bottles for example if you go buy something in the shop and it's like a plastic or glass bottle they will charge uh, they, they will charge you extra 10 cents and then when you use this bottle and you will take it back to the store you will get just 10 cents per bottle back and that's really great because it encouraged the poor the homeless to look for all the bottles in the city like in the trash cans so to get them back to the store to get the money like to buy food or something and it's really great like for cycling for environment and i enjoyed it very much i was like very happy when they installed those machines and when i'm here now it's just a big disappointment and i think that starting from the next week i really need to find those special points where they actually recycle the garbage because it just hurt like my my heart hurts every time i see those uh men taking out the garbage all together like mixed out of the city it could seem that like montenegro is not like a good place or something so those are the facts that disturb me but i am ready to cope with them at least for now because i can see those beautiful mountains i can see this beautiful nature and for me it's a gift and i take every possible moment to enjoy it and I'm really ready to cope <laughs> with the fact that there's trash outside or that I will not get my service that fast as for example in Latvia or that I will not buy something in Montenegro like headphones or phone I need to order it from somewhere etc. Not very cool but I like nature more and I love that people are open. I also love living in Latvia, but I just knew that I would not live there like forever, you know, that I would move somewhere else. And I don't know if Montenegro is my country. We'll see. I want you to let me know in the comments below if you come from any of this country or if you are thinking about traveling or immigrating into these countries. Also, I would be very grateful if you let me know uh, what you are interested in about Latvia, Montenegro, China, France, maybe Russia, because I come from Russia and of course nowadays, well, talking about Russia in the videos may be not the best option, um, but if you are somehow interested in Russian culture, etc., also let me know in the comments below, I'll be happy to share, because it's my home country, of course I love it, so see you in the next video and bye-bye.